Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is the daily show where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, put some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is Jenna Zen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Collider Movie Talk. No, it is not Friday. Yes, I know it's Tuesday. Just <laughs> filling in for John Campion. He's working on some other stuff. Uh, who else has joined us? Also here is Jeremy Johns. I swear to God, you know that John Campion works far too hard. Speaking of not working too hard, Mova and I are drunk right now. Um, that's because so you know. it's Fat Tuesday. We had to. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. Also here, maybe sober, is Perry Nemiroff. Um, you don't know if there's coffee in this mm. film. Ah. There is, and it's amazing. But I'm a little distracted by all the bling right next to me. Yeah, look at oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got a couple rings on today. <laughs> Who do you uh, think I you are, my, my rings, father? Like, hey, what? what? Who do you think you are, my father? My dad loves rings. Yeah. Also, here's John <laughs> Moba, I'm What's up? I'm ringless and not drunk. <laughs> look at these people. Every day there's some weird, hey, it's it's Drunk Tuesday. It's Flippy Wednesday. It's Gibby Thursday. <laughs> well, I'd like, I'd like to Friday. participate in Flippy Tuesday yeah. or Flippy, Flippy I'm Wednesday. Not, I'm, not, I'm not ripping on Flippy Wednesday. Okay. That's my day that I get drunk. <laughs> F all of you who are drunk right now. Uh -oh. Amateur hour. Uh -oh. Just uh -oh. That's here. Get drunk. <laughs> all right. What do we get up first? The final trailer for Kong Skull Island has been released and it's given us our best look yet at the monster free for all that will soon be hitting theaters. With its strong Apocalypse Now vibe and 70s setting, the trailer also offers a better look at the humor set within the story. The movie stars Brie Larson, Tom Hiddleston, John C. Riley, Samuel L. Jackson, John Goodman, and Corey Hawkins and stomps into theaters on March 10th. Dennis, thoughts on the final trailer for Kong Skull Island? I liked it. I liked it a lot. I think it's the best trailer that they've done so far. I mean, I think we're all kind of worried, are they showing too much? But at least, unlike with the Godzilla stuff, they're showing Kong. They're showing him yeah. fighting. All those action sequences with the skull crawlers look cool. Uh, there was that, that dialogue scene between John C. Riley, Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson. That, it didn't really hit for me. I actually thought the funniest part was when... There was a close-up of John C. Riley's face, and he's holding the sword. I just crack up when when I see that. Schnepp, what do you think? Well, my brother John C. Riley would appreciate that. <laughs> I I actually like the trailer. I heard you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's showing too much," and so I was expecting it to be a big trailer ruin. It really didn't for me. I was like, "Oh, it showed." You got a lot of looks at Kong, and I really love that kind of lockdown in the helicopter shot with it rotating. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's pure cinema. So it got me really excited about seeing the film. I didn't feel like I learned too much. It wasn't ruined for me. It's like, it's in the 70s. There's an Apocalypse Now vibe. You got a giant Kong. Enough said, I'm seeing that movie. Perry? This is not what I was expecting at all at this point from this trailer. We just went from... Like an eight to an eleven. There's, I'm not more. I'm not at this point. I'm not worrying about them spoiling plot details. It's more so just key imagery to me that looks like it probably came from the tail end of the movie. But you know, that being said, I haven't seen the movie yet, and damn, does this trailer sell it well? It is just so much fun. What, what's the um? We got to get out of this place. Right. That is just the perfect music selection for this. The imagery still looks beautiful, too. I mean, even shots that I've seen in previous trailers, I still want to screen capture them and hang them up. It's nice to see Brie Larson actually talk in this and come across as though she's one of the major stars of the movie. Ah. Oh. I, I can't wait to see this movie. Jeremy, you excited about this? Yeah, that's a good point about Brie Larson because I always forget she's in the movie until I see something about her in the movie. I'm like, oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, it is a good thing that she actually spoke. But, uh, yeah, I, I was one of the ones. I'm one of the ones like, eh, it shows a bit too much. Granted, it doesn't show any more plot detail than we already knew. We know they're going to an island and there's a Kong. And, uh, actually, I would argue that plot-wise, the last trailer showed more because it talked about how John C. Riley was like, he's actually a pretty good king, but you came into his backyard started dropping bombs none of those plot details were in here but in terms of the visual imagery that i like being surprised about i feel like a friend could watch this go back to his friend and be like dude there's this cool shot in the hell and his friend could be like yeah in the helicopter where it flips around yeah i saw it in the trailer you know what i mean so <laughs> there there is that uh, point to me that i like saving shots of cinematography for when i'm there locked into the movie theater but where you, did like, you oh see it in God. imax jerry no, I you did. saw it on your phone but i have one thing that a lot of people don't have, and that's imagination. Ooh. My phone becomes an IMAX wow. screen when I'm watching it on my telephone, John Schnepp. I can't do that, man. To me, it's still a phone. I'm like, I can't wait to experience it in my tiny brain in IMAX. It yeah. does sell IMAX well, it because does. after right. I finish watching it in the teeny tiny box mm -hmm. on my computer, I'm like, I should probably see this in IMAX versus any other format. But it is the best trailer that I've had. If anyone was like, I don't know. I mean, if you watch this trailer, you're going to be like, yeah, I'm going to see that when it comes back. You know? so that's undeniable, right? Yeah, that's I'm kind of hoping that that one sequence where he's fighting the skull crawlers mm -hmm. is 
midway through the right. movie, m- much like that T-Rex scene in the yeah, other King Kong. Yeah, that's what And hopefully there's a bigger sequence at the very end. So this movie, none of us have seen the film yet, but no. seeing this trailer really kind of nailed the 70s for me. I was like, because the first two trailers, I was kind of like, oh, it's it's maybe set in the mm-hmm. 70s, but now it's definitely in my mind after seeing this trailer. Yeah. It's set in the 70s. Godzilla is not. Kong versus Godzilla probably won't be. So how old will this Kong be, and does this bode well for the future of this Kong? Right. I, I don't know. I mean, from seeing previous Kong movies, like seeing the size of him in this one, I'm like, okay, now that Kong can take on the right. Godzilla that we've seen. Because before, you know, Kong was pretty tiny, tiny. Compared, yeah. compared, compared to him. Very tiny. Yeah. All right, what's next? David Ayer took to Twitter yesterday, and it wasn't to share his new Netflix trailer, Bright, or to talk about what he might have done different in Suicide Squad. Instead, he shared just one picture, a picture that has sent DC fans into speculation mode. Thanks to the tweet and image, many fans now believe that Black Mask will be the main villain for his upcoming DC spinoff, Gotham City Sirens. Ayer will be re-teamed with Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn for the movie that is also rumored to include Catwoman and Poison Ivy. The movie is currently in development with a release date not yet determined. Schnepp, with the way directors are using social media, do you think Ayer is telling us that Black Mass is actually going to be in his Gotham City Sirens? Um, absolutely not. Yes, he's saying Black Mask <laughs> is going to... Black Mask, meet Red Skull. If people don't know who Black <laughs> Mask is, uh, he wasn't in the Oscar-winning movie Suicide Squad, but he's going to be in Gotham City Sirens for sure. He's a great villain. He's one of Batman's villains. So I am very excited to see a character that hasn't gotten any shine in any really media, of like, I think animated a little bit. But... Uh, as far as live action, nothing. So I can't wait to see the. Well, you got some video gameplay too, but not in the movie yet. So here we go, Black Mask. Jeremy. Yeah, uh, I, I agree that the one time Black Mask was supposed to get shine was in the game Batman Arkham Origins, right. and it ended up he didn't get shine. So some fans felt like they got kicked in the balls yeah. about it. They're like, "What? I just it was supposed to be." So they didn't really get it. I still liked the game, but I understand. So I'm glad Black uh, Black Mass is going to get something. Roman Sionis is a good villain, you know. He's a he's a crime kingpin, you know. And uh, as someone who said, "No, nope, Pierce Brosnan is probably not going to be Cable because of the picture that was tweeted." Yeah, I'm going to say Black Mask is going to be in here because I ain't falling for that twice. I don't make the mm. same mistake twice, friends. It's real. Yeah, normally I'd be saying, calm yourselves, people. It's just a tweet. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean anything. But I think it might have been the Hollywood Reporter article pointed (laughs) out that this is kind of what Ayer did with Suicide Squad. And a lot of that proved to be true. He's very vocal on Twitter. So I'm going to assume at this point that this is happening. And I'm excited about it. I didn't know all that much about Black Mask. and Just look at him. Look how scary he is. But that's the thing. I just look at him and my horror-loving brains is like, (laughs) creepy dude, I want to see him. And then I started looking up the False Face Society. I want to see that in live action. That could be batshit crazy. And now I am just praying that this is true. And that's what the movie's going to be. As long as David Ayer isn't pulling Vin Diesel, where he's like putting up a bunch of different pictures, mm. trying to just kind of troll the audience into guessing <laughs> what was going to happen, I, I think this is true. I think Black Mask will be the villain of Gotham City Sirens. I'm still not sure why they're doing this movie, as opposed to just a true Harley Quinn spinoff film, <laughs> having her, Catwoman, and Poison Ivy together. I know Black Mask has a history with Catwoman, I just I think I would have preferred just a solo Harley Quinn movie with 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 the Joker. But this is a really cool way to introduce not only a lot of the other female characters like Catwoman, but this is a good way to in- introduce uh, Batgirl. Okay, this, that's why I think that's the secret little that she's at, this is her backdoor entrance. So. Uh, um, just a side note to what you were saying before about the uh, Oscar-winning Suicide Squad. You know what movie doesn't have an Oscar? Martin Scorsese's Silence. <laughs> so you have Suicide Squad, Oscar winning, Silence. Uh, Sorry, not Dennis. So much. Silence does not deserve an Oscar. Uh, well, they could have gotten an Oscar for some There's other. many other C- Scorsese movies that should have won. It had a great cinematography in it. Um, all right, uh, what's next? <laughs> It's time for a look at the weekend box office report and Blumhouse's Get Out. The Jordan Peele horror commentary open to rave reviews and a stunning $33.4 million in its first weekend in release for the number one spot. The Lego Batman movie took in $19.2 million for the number two spot, sitting now at $133 million domestic and $226 million worldwide. And the number three spot was John Wick's Chapter 2. John Wick Chapter 2. The Keanu Reeves sequel 
moved up a spot from last week and now has 74 million domestic gross. Universal's The Great Wall took the number four spot with 9.13 million, bringing its domestic total to 34.8 million. And in the number five spot was 50 Shades Darker, pulling in 7.8 million. Jeremy, thoughts on the weekend box office? Yeah, so Collide's nowhere on there? That's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what movie do you speak of? <laughs> yeah, that's really weird. All the marketing behind that uh, one should have just blown the roof off. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really glad that uh, that Get Out uh, was number one. It was uh, by far the best movie that came out last weekend. It was a great thriller. It was a dark comedy in parts. It was a suspense movie. Kind of reminded me of some messed up uh, like episode of The Outer Limits or something. Mm. That was just there was it was just a very twisted thing. And uh, I thought it was great. I, th I, I thought it was uh, very smart, well balanced in the way they're like, hey, here's some social commentary and actually a, a legit thriller behind it. And written and directed by uh, Jordan Peele, it's always good to see someone go, hey, I'm going to take a leap and a stab at this. And it paid off. And, mm. uh, and I'm also really glad that Collide was nowhere in that top yeah. five or ten. So, uh, yeah, and I'm glad that Lego Batman's holding on. And so is John Wick. I'm glad Fifty Shades is getting pushed out slowly but surely. And all in all, it was a pretty solid weekend for people who thought that the weekend really didn't have much going going for it and then walked out of Get Out surprised. Fair. Fifty Shades might be dropping off that top ten. I think it's got almost 330 million worldwide, though. I don't like yeah, you, you will be, you will be seeing a sequel. <laughs> no, stop. But no, stop. Hanra is taking over. Hanra! Two, two of the biggest openings of the year. I mean, it's, it's split and <laughs> get out. This is huge. The movie deserves it. And one of the mm -hmm. coolest things about it is it's, it's a big opening money-wise that's also paired with a really great reaction from the audience. I think it's got a, an A- minus on cinema score, so that mm. means it's not going anywhere anytime soon, even though we have an absolutely insane march ahead of us where we're getting one major blockbuster <laughs> after the next. Mm. If anything can survive competition like that, it's going to be Get Out. And that's just huge for Jordan Peele. It's huge for the genre. It's huge for taking risks with horror movies like this. I'm so happy that this is how it panned out. Yeah, what's more surprising than even just the the number that Get Out got, especially given that it wasn't it doesn't have any huge stars in it, mm -hmm. and it was just basically good word of mouth. It has a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. Right? One. It's yeah. crazy. One it damn rotten review. <laughs> and I guarantee you a lot of you can figure out who it came from. Yeah. So I, it's crazy because it originally was 100%. Now it's 99. I never thought that this film would get that high of, of a rating. And then for the re Lego Batman, we knew it was going to hold on and mm. it's going to keep trucking along. John Wick 2, as a fan of the franchise, I'm excited because now... Because of the money it's made, it made uh, it's 74 million, 125 million worldwide. That's a, far exceeds the original. The original only made 43 million uh, domestically, and I think 88 worldwide. So that bodes well for a, another film in the franchise. And then uh, Great Wall, yeah, I mean, the, too many lizards. Well, Kimmel, <laughs> Kimmel made fun of uh, of Matt Damon at oh, the yeah. Oscars, uh, <laughs> like passing over Manchester by the Sea to to do this movie. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, uh, Perry's right. As much as we dog Fifty Shades Darker and the whole franchise, and even though it's making far less money than the the first one, it's still making enough money. It's the budget's like forty million dollars, and it's making three hundred thirty million worldwide. They're gonna make another movie. Fifty Shades Darkest. I won't see that either. But you know what? I I am gonna see is Get Out. I saw Split. I'm writing my own movie. It's called Leave. Got to keep that thing going. You know, people just want to see <laughs> movies about Split. Yeah, get out. Scram. Get out of here. Yeah. And even though just title that movie, you're gonna make forty million dollars. But everything, honestly, Get Out. I didn't even get a chance to see it because I was catching up. I saw Cure for Wellness that I guess isn't doing too well. But man, no. I highly recommend that film. It is a great hammer horror movie done right. I wish people would go see it. I was late to the party. Mm -hmm. It's still playing in a couple theaters, so I gotta pimp that really hard. Then see it, do a double feature, say a cure for wellness, get out. That's Talk what about say. another movie that takes some risks. Yeah, that took a lot of risks, but they paid off. I heard so many bad things about it, and then I saw the movie and I was really pleasantly surprised. All right, guys, now we're moving on to buy or sell. <clears throat> Ashley, what do we got up first? <laughs> what <laughs> happened there, Dennis? Sunday's <laughs> Oscar telecast, Netflix dropped the very first teaser trailer for Bright, the sci-fi mashup movie directed by David Ayer and written by Max Landis. The movie stars Will Smith and Joel Edgerton in a story set in an alternate reality in which humans live alongside orcs, elves, and fairies and have done so throughout history. 
Bright follows two L.A. cops from different backgrounds who stumble into some world-altering trouble during a routine patrol. Bright is available only on Netflix this December. Perry, buy or sell the first teaser for Bright. Wow, did I not see this coming at all. There's very little that could take my attention away from the Oscars during that telecast, but as much as I was excited to like chit-chat about whatever one, all of a sudden the bright trailer came on and you could just everyone stopped talking in this office and looked at the TV. It was only I think 40 seconds long or maybe a little under. Something about just the, the imagery and seeing Will Smith and then all the random stuff that came after. I mean, we don't even really know how all of this fits together mm. and it makes no sense to me at all at this point, but the way it was presented in a matter of seconds already has me hooked. I love the way this thing looks. I love these ideas. I love Will Smith. This thing could be absolutely crazy and I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's a big buy for me. This is a movie that when I first heard about it, David Ayer was doing a Will a movie with Will Smith on Netflix, and I kind of looked at the log line. I was like, not interested. Did, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to check this out. I see this 30-second teaser, and I'm like, wow, this is something different. This is something cool. I mean, what, Max Landis wrote the script. Right. He mm -hmm. got like $3 million for it. Right. Netflix bought it for $90 million, cost about 40 something to produce. Yeah, I'm on board with this. I'm, I'm looking forward to a full-blown trailer. Snap. Yeah, I would retitle it Orc in a Hoodie. I mean, because this, yeah. this really was like it's combining these two genres really well. Like, you've got the cop procedural, you got, you know, sword sword and sorcery, you know, with ba orcs running around in hoodies. I feel like I, Orc in a Hoodie would yeah. catch more eyes than Bright. That's right. I think you should retitle it, Ayers, Orc in a Hoodie. Just trust me on this. Don't trust me. But uh, anyway, I, I'm 100% in on this trailer. Do I have to wait till December? That's right. I got to wait till December. Big deal. I got to wait till October for Stranger Things too. Stop crying about it, Jeremy. Yeah, when uh, <laughs> when you kind of look at it like a like a like a sword and magic show yeah. with mm -hmm. cops. I just love it when you blend genres like the the comic book fables or the the Wolf Among Us. That was the uh, the Telltale game. Anytime you take cops and something else and you squeeze it together, mm. I I genuinely I. I'm intrigued just innately. Mm. Um, at first, when I saw it, I was like, okay, cop. I didn't know it was about, I didn't know what it was about. And so I'm like, okay, Will Smith is a cop. This is going to, oh my God, is that a, is that Killer Croc? I'm like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and so, hey, who knows? Uh, I, I'm interested. I guess that's the word I can use is that this trailer interested me. It intrigued me, which is what a trailer is supposed to do. And so not everything Will Smith does is gold, but this looks interesting. It just is so it's a movie. It's not a series. It's this Correct. isn't oh, a yeah. movie. It's just like One two movie, hours yeah. in and out. And all right. Um, I'm actually a little bummed that I'm not gonna binge it because yeah. that does look like a fun eight hours. It looks like it would be a series. Right, right? Well, for sure. It's like anytime you have that yeah. kind of a world, you wanna build it into eight episodes. But uh, hey, if the movie's good, bring on the movie. I was going to say, they've got TV shows that have used this kind of blending already mm -hmm. where there's cops you know, chasing down werewolves. And mm -hmm. they had a series like a couple of years back where they did that. And it lasted, I think, two seasons. And then they've got another one called Cops and Monsters coming out. Which, But then you see this trailer, and this is done so cinematically that yeah. it kind of washes all those away mm -hmm. where you're like, those are kind of the easily digestible if you want to binge. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, what's this week? We're after a werewolf kind of wee wee. You know, and then you see this, and you're like, all right, now we're we got orcs and hoodies. We're not messing around, you know. So yeah, we're, we're joking, but this trailer takes itself very no, seriously, yeah, totally. which I like. Which, yeah. which is a cool way to sell it because knowing Max Landis's work, I think a lot of his scripts have these absolutely insane ideas, but some of them do take themselves pretty seriously. I mean, maybe not so much. Uh, uh, what's the Frankenstein movie with? Uh, oh right, oh, yeah. Victor Frankenstein. Yeah, Frankenstein. Maybe, maybe not so much that one. But now, uh, now of course I can't think about the other one with Kristen Stewart and Jesse Eisenberg. American Ultra. American, American Ultra. Ultra right. Well, American Ultra respected the fact that they were real people going through this thing, but it they were just in the middle of this crazy situation. So I am thinking that maybe this will have a similar tone. And Joel Edgerton plays the the his partner, the right? Oh, he plays the orc. I'm I'm pretty sure Joel okay. Edgerton plays the orc, unless yeah. I. Look he, up I think he's just yeah he's buried in makeup. You don't really get a chance to see him, uh, but there's a, he's in that foreground shot. I believe, that could be him right there. Okay. So uh, he got he, he got three million bucks to to write this. Yeah. Well, no, I think he already wrote it. He yeah. just sold it to to them to make it. So. He pounds out a script in ninety minutes. He gets Schnepp. like a couple million. Man, what's Let's up, Max? It. Yeah. Dude, Schnepp and I are gonna write a script called Orcs and Hoodies. And it's also our great. follow up, Leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so just get ready. Right. Yeah, we're leave making that. with yeah. a predator hunt with a predator. We're, we're writing it this weekend. So. Joel Edgerton is the orc. Okay. And I suspect that he is his partner. 
Oh, okay. Looked to be getting along well. Will Smith looked to be getting along mm. well with his orc counterpart during filming. So I imagine that means they were partners. Hey, I, guess, I guess I was prejudiced against, uh, against orcs. I just assumed <laughs> yeah. he was How a villain. Dare you? I, I saw that war crap. Yeah. No, <laughs> don't be such an orc hater, man. Bloodlust. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, you know, Max Landis spends so much time writing. Yeah. I mean, some people are like, oh, he just pounded that out in 90 minutes. The guy's, you know, a sieve of information, just well, constantly thinking writer. about yeah, stuff. Yeah, job. so <laughs> that's what he, he's got 50 unproduced movies. So. Right. All right, what's Let's next? Do it. As we head into the final lap for the release of the live action Beauty and the Beast, Disney has released another clip revealing Luke Evans' <clears throat> Gaston and Josh Gad's LeFou singing the classic song that will be featured in the movie entitled Gaston. Dreamgirls' as Bill Condon directs the remake with music by Disney veteran Alan Menken. The movie stars Emma Watson as Belle and Dan Stevens as the Beast, with a release date set for March 17th. Dennis Byersell, the new clip from Beauty and the Beast. I'm going to buy it. I had mentioned before that none of the trailers for me have really gotten me really excited for this film. Uh, I do like this clip. It's cool seeing Josh Gad sing, and we've seen him sing in, in Frozen before. Uh, I'm going to see this movie on Thursday, so hopefully it, it's better than, than I'm expecting. Jeremy? I'm selling the selling the clip okay. uh, because I yeah I, I just wanted to see Wendy make that face. That's right. Haters look corner. At, look at that face. You know what? Yeah. This is why. This is why. It's not that the, the clip is bad. I just like why are you showing me every musical number before the movie comes out? Like I want to like like it's like the feeling of the Kong trailer times a few because it's like how many musical numbers are you going to show me when the movie comes out in like a week and a half? It's just let me watch the movie. You don't have to show me every musical number. You could have had one musical number with Belle, so we're like, oh, whoa, okay, they're doing the, the legit tone of the Disney animated feature, but in live action, and then we go into it, and then we get all these other musical numbers. I don't need to see the Gaston musical piece as well as the Belle musical piece. I don't need to see all these musical pieces. That detracts from it, because when that scene comes into the movie, whether you want to say it or not, Wendy... What's going to happen is you're going to be like, I've seen this before. Or and it's going to be that 30 bummer. seconds, though. That song's so much That's longer. That's enough. That's enough. Or they're prepping people to sing in the theater, which is my most hated mm. thing. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> I, I saw this a hundred times. They're <laughs> <laughs> singing in the theater. <laughs> the little ball starts yeah, like bouncing oh, come on, on, the on. Words. We <laughs> should send you to a sing-along screening and no. just film your reaction oh. the entire time. All I have to say uh. is that we, we have actually a Beauty and the Beast of the original animation commentary with, with Ashley Movo, Haters Wendy, Corner. Sinead, and Natasha <laughs> that's coming up actually, I think, next week. Yeah. Hey. The, there's a lot of singing going oh, on. Oh, I there. can only imagine. I, Thank God I wasn't there when yeah. you guys filmed it. I just can't believe. I would have chimed in some hateful thoughts. Oh. <laughs> but it, this is kind of a fun story. At the movie theater, we we played Mamma Mia, and we it had the sing along version. And there's all these little old ladies out there. You, you could look through the port window of the projection booth, and all these little white heads were just like bouncing and singing, and they were like having the best time ever because they that's were kind of drunk. Oh yeah, they that's were kind of drunk. Fun. <laughs> just, that's fun. That's fun. But fine. not Beauty and the Beast. I want to hear a bunch of little children and family members and stupid people that's singing. That's why you do the singing. I want to see old people at midnight, and like you just bring no, a little something. All right, with maybe you. I'll yeah. do it. Maybe I'm just full that's of hate the answer. today. Perry. I'm preparing you guys in advance. I'm, don't hate me. I'm selling this as well. And not, not for the same reason you sold it, Jerry. I actually, I, Wendy, I agree with you. This is a small portion of a much longer song. And I think that was pretty deliberate that they only showed Josh Gad performing for the most part and only a little Luke Evans because there's much more that we'll experience in the full feature. I'm selling this. And if I had been on Movie Talk, I would have sold the last clip as well. Not because I have any problem with... You know, the way the production design looks, the way they sound singing these songs, I don't like how it's shot. It crossed my mind during the bell scene from whenever that dropped that it's it's a hard thing to explain and it would be very boring if I started to say like, oh, because this frame is ugly. Something about where my eye naturally wants to be, it kind of never is in either of these sequences. I think some of the frames are ugly and in particular the bell scene. They're, they're just showing weird angles and weird things that's not that things that shouldn't be the focus of attention so I just don't like how these are shot are you trying to destroy Mark Ellis's 200 million dollar <laughs> oh. 
just you, by saying that, it's now it's 100. Out my she's trying to ship it away. 198. <laughs> All right, let's go over to the, the haters' corner over there. Haters' corner. Uh, Ashley, uh, what do you think? Um, I don't know. Can I buy it and get some store credit because I'm so <laughs> overseeing more and more clips of this movie. I'm already excited for it. We already really know the entire story, basically. So what are we supposed to be excited to see? The new take on it. And if you're showing me so many clips of the new take. You know, I'm 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 kind of done seeing. I almost didn't want to watch it I this know. morning. Wendy was like, "You got to watch it because they're going to come to us for it." But um, everything looks great. I love Luke Evans as Gaston. I love Josh Gad. I've loved him since The Wedding Ringer. I know not a lot of people oh, yeah. love that movie, but he made me laugh so hard in that movie, and I can see he has that charm. And I just I love that charm that he has. And when we did the commentary, I didn't realize how abusive Gaston yes. was was towards LeFou. It's and I'm wondering, the whole time. I'm wondering if we're going to see more of that. But I'm done seeing clips. I buy it. It, but I'm I'm I don't want to see any more of the movie. Yeah, I know. I keep saying I'm not gonna see any more, but then curi curiosity gets to me. Like mm -hmm. I keep saying, I think Josh Gad is gonna sound just like LeFou from the original, and that's why I clicked on. I was like, Ashley, we have to watch it. <laughs> um, so sure enough, we did, and he sounds like they. It sounds like they took the original LeFou and would just put the soul of that person into Josh Gad's body and go, so go sing. <laughs> and Luke Evans with one his one line, I said he sounded so good, like almost like the original. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward. I was gonna to say, it. don't forget, Josh Gad came from the original Book of Mormon. Book of uh, Mormon. I saw him perform. Two by two. That guy's got that voice, man. He can do it. Let me get this straight, Mova. Yeah. This whole time, mm -hmm. I said I sell it, and then the jaws drops at that table. And I was like, I sell it because I don't want to see any more clips. You guys no, were like, that's absurd. No, I, 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 I don't want to see any more clips, she I says. I have a hard time saying that I sell it because I am excited for the movie, but no. I just don't want to see any more. So that's why I say I want store credit. This, I want to buy it and I want store credit. <laughs> this sounds to me like you sell it. I'm just saying. Uh, I don't they, know. I she's don't renting know. it. They, they want store credit. credit. They want to agree uh, with you without agreeing with yeah, this. Yeah, it's all right. It's fine. That's what you get in haters' corner, Sam. Hashtag Jeremy. She agrees with me. Yeah, All right, let's move on to the last by herself. All right, yeah, THR reports that Vera Farmiga has been added to the cast of Godzilla, King of Monsters, playing the mother of Millie Bobby Brown. She joins the already cast Cal Chandler as her husband and Bobby Brown's father. Krampus Michael Doherty is directing from a script that he wrote with Zach Shields. The plot details are still under wraps, however. THR was able to learn that Chandler is the hero in the movie, playing a scientist. Godzilla, King of the Monsters, is slated for release on March 22, 2019. Jeanette Byers, Vera Farmiga, and Godzilla, King of Monsters. I think she's going to be playing the Brian Cranston role in this uh, <laughs> version. Uh, you know what? I buy, her, I buy her being cast in the movie because she's super talented. She's an amazing actress. So anytime she's cast in anything, it elevates the film. So good casting. Pair. Yeah, when we're in a situation where we don't really know all that much about the plot or her character in particular, am I buying Vera Farmiga cast in any movie? Yeah, it's Vera Farmiga, Dougherty, Kyle Chandler, and Millie Bobby Brown. I'm pretty sure that's a solid start to this movie. Jeremy? Yeah, it's a, there's not much to say when it's so secretive. You don't know much about the characters. All you know is Vera Farmiga was cast in a movie. On that, I completely buy it. But I love how it's phrased and everything. It's like, Vera Farmiga is cast as Millie Bobby Brown's mom. It's like, do we know anything about Millie Bobby Brown? No, but she's her mom. It's like, so a mom, <laughs> a mom was cast That's in right. a movie. All right, yeah. I buy it because she's talented. But yeah, I agree. She's probably going to die in seven seconds. You actually seconds. made it sound really exciting. <laughs> yeah, well, That's she's great. a secret That's agent. Great. If you if you read anything, it sounds super exciting. But in the end, when you strip it all away, Vera Farmiga plays a mom in a Godzilla movie. You should just That's read us the is. headlines from all the trades, and then we'll get excited about every story. I just want to yeah. see a scene of her doing that, like Brian Cranston. If you only knew the power of Godzilla, and then yeah. she explodes. She's going to wipe us back to the starting. Yeah. Jesse. <laughs> Yeah, like you guys, I buy it. I like Vera Formiga ever since I saw her in The Departed. I think that was the yeah. first thing I ever saw her in. Oh, yeah. She's on, uh, I think, the, that TV show Bates Motels where she yeah. plays a mother, the plays mother as well. I think that's in its final season. Yeah, and we had discussed this in pre-production. We hope that her character doesn't vanish like <laughs> uh, Brian Cranston's character right. did. Like This whole time we had been sold that Brian Cranston was like the star of Godzilla, right. and then... He, he, he leaves in he the first, falls like, off like hmm. falls some first, yeah the first third of the movie yeah so all right guys uh, before we move on to mailbag I want to remind you that we're gonna take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show you can tweet us at Collider video also want to remind you guys that heroes is uh, we're having a live show at 2 30 that's right PST uh, with John Schnepp over there we also uh, our Doctor Strange commentary of the blu-ray is out and the blu-ray actually dropped today the digital release was I think two weeks ago so if you go out and buy the Blu-ray today, you can watch it. 
Join me, Schnepp, Ellis, and Campia. <laughs> Schnepp, uh, you also have some good news about uh, Doctor Strange. So y- yeah. your, your pal was talking you up a little yeah, bit. That's kind of crazy. I was just like, you know, scrimping around on the internet yesterday. Uh, Frosty was like, yo, check out this interview that uh, Benedict, uh, I call him just, I just call him the Batch, but Benedict Cumberbatch uh, mentioned <laughs> me by my last name. Just said, yeah, I'm glad Schnepp, uh, you know, Schnepp had some high expectations. I'm very happy that he was pleased with it. Thank you, Benedict Cumberbatch, for appreciating myself and all of uh, everybody here at Collider because we love movies. We especially all loved your 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 version of Doctor Strange and you as Doctor Strange. So hats off to you. Yeah, Schnepp's not joking. He, no. he, he actually mentioned you he by got, name. He name checked me, and he, you know, because we go back, man. That's why he can call me Schnepp. He doesn't have to say John or Mister <laughs> Schnepp. He just say, as, as long as Schnepp's expect, expectations. That's my new <laughs> weekly show. Schnepp Schnepp's. I can't even say it. Schnepp's expectations. It's coming out next week. Whatever, I'll yeah, figure yeah. it out. No you were Chris. Yeah. You were blessed by the batch of cumber, my That's friend. Right. That's no small thing. <laughs> yeah, we also had a new TV talk that dropped yesterday. Also a crash course on Sunday that talked about what you should know about Logan before you actually see the film. And then we also have a new schmodown coming out later today. That's IGN versus nerdist uh we also jeremy you had a new austin tackler show that debuted on friday yeah a new episode on friday new episodes every friday uh schnepp and i would get sweaty at the comic book store we start talking some comic books he drops some knowledge bombs on me we we, we go we have some back and forth it's such a fun segment to yeah. shoot also and uh, yeah mark and i do more movie shots so Nothing is more disheartening than taking uh, shots of mystery liquids because you failed at something. Like you just don't. <laughs> but know you know, what but it it's is. It, but it's entertaining watching you guys do it, not me. Yeah, 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 like yeah. You guys. <laughs> yeah. Dennis is like, I don't have to do shit. Yeah. It's you who's taking the <laughs> shots. It's true. It's a, it's pain for your gain, my yeah. friends. All right, guys. Now we're moving on to a <laughs> mailbag. Ashley, what do we got? John Alexander writes, hey guys, greetings from Dundee in Scotland. So Graham Norton had Hugh Jackman and Sir Patrick Stewart on last Friday, and Sir Patrick basically came right out and said that Logan will be his last go around as Professor X. Does this surprise you guys at all, or is this pretty much what you were expecting? Thanks for all the awesome-tacular content. Keep up the good work. Dude said awesome tacular. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, my man. Right there. Um, uh, go, ahead, uh, go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to say, it doesn't surprise me at all. Like, we've we've heard that hey, this is Hugh Jackman's last run as Wolverine. By proxy, you assume it's going to be Patrick Stewart's last run as uh, Professor X. Like, these guys have been at it for a while. Um, with Even with the integration of McAvoy, I thought, oh, maybe Patrick Stewart's done. But they kind of, like, you, simultaneously were doing Professor X. It's, uh, I mean, it's time. The dude's been doing it for a while. Like, 17 years of Professor or X, do you get? He was Picard for half that time, mm. you know. So yeah, I, it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, but Logan is, if this is their last run, it's a great send off for them. I think it's fantastic. I think you guys are really gonna love it. And uh, no, no real surprise whatsoever. Not not surprised either. I actually thought Days of Future Past was gonna be his yeah, right. last film. I thought it was kind of like that Star Trek Generations thing when right. mm-hmm. Captain Kirk passed it off to Picard. I thought uh, he was passing off to James McAvoy. I think he just heard and read the script for Logan and realized he it was too good to pass mm-hmm. up. It was like yeah. here's an R-rated comic book film that is very serious. And I'm saying this, I'll be surprised. This movie, I mean it's a it's only what the end of February right now. It's one. It's my favorite movie I've seen this year so far. I'll be surprised if it gets knocked out of my top ten mm-hmm. of, of the year. That's how good it is. Uh, Schnepp. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to stay in my top ten. I, it's it's the one to beat at least for me this year. I mean, I gave it a nine point nine. I think it's fantastic. It comes out this Friday. I'm seeing it again tomorrow. I can't wait. Uh, Logan. So, Patrick Stewart being done with Professor X. You never say never in this business. Uh, that's all I can say. Perry? I don't know. I'm not surprised. I'm pretty sure he's said this before. Both him and Hugh Jackman have both spoken about how this is going to be their last go with these characters. And it should be because this movie is excellent. I have seen it twice. I am obsessed with it. (laughs) And it it is firmly in my top ten at this point. And we're going to have one heck of a year in movies in 2017 Mm -hmm. if it falls off that list. All right. What's next? Ronnie writes, hello, Collider. I'm Ronnie from Philly, and I've been a fan of Collider since high school. You! My question is this. Since the announcement of a Nightwing movie, who do you guys think should portray Dick Grayson slash Nightwing? Love what you guys do, so keep hustling. P.S. Tell all the Collider ladies that Ronnie says hi. Ronnie says hi. Ronnie from Philly says hi, (laughs) haters corner. What's up? (laughs) Oh, man. I mean, there's been a lot of people thrown around. I think Collider.com had just put up a poll that included people 
like uh, Riz Ahmed, Steve Yuen, uh, Jensen Ackles, Richard Madden, Garrett Hedlund, Ben Barnes, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, out of that list, I would have liked to see Ben Barnes. Uh, I don't think that will happen because I think he's playing a character in the upcoming Punisher series for Marvel, and I don't think DC would want to take uh, someone that's uh, MCU per- personality and and lead a, a DCEU property. Out of that list, the thing is, in that poll, there was no front runner. Everything was, mm-hmm. I think the highest one was 12%, and most of them were like 10%, or whatever. The one that got 12%, though, was Joseph Gordon Levitt, and that's the one I don't want to see. I absolutely do not want to see, not that I don't like him, I think he's a fantastic actor. I don't want any connection between this DC universe and the Nolan trilogy. Let the Nolan trilogy stand on its own. So I don't know what your thoughts are. Schnepp? My thoughts are, how old is Army Hammer? Oh, I'm not sure. 40s? He's early? Oh, I no, he's not in his 40s. He's in his 30s. Early 30s, I think. I'm predicting he shows up in Justice League as Nightwing. He's no, I'm 30. Predicting, I'm predicting he's Nightwing. And not only is he going to be Nightwing in the Nightwing movie, and that not only is he in Justice League as Nightwing, but I'm predicting that he's going to be also in the Batman film as Dick Grayson, as Nightwing. So... Um, that's my pick. If I wanted to be funny about it, I'd say uh, Jack Black is Batman and Josh Gad is Nightwing. <laughs> Jeremy? Did you say he's 30? He's 30. 30. Yeah, he's Nightwing. I'm old. Believe me. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, it was funny enough, uh, before you even went on your tirade, okay. I was like, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, because I love messing with people. <laughs> so that's, that, that's, the kind of, that's the kind of person I am. That's the quality of my character, Dennis, but I'm going to leave that out now. You know, I saw back when I think Dark Knight was coming out, and they were already talking about the third Batman movie, um, that I saw a thing that was like Milo Ventimiglia was going to be Robin. Mm. And so for some stupid reason, I still have him in my head as someone who could be a legit Dick Grayson. Um, haven't heard from him in a little while because he was huge. This is when Heroes season one had just wrapped. Season two was coming out. But uh, he's my pick, dude. I think he'd be an awesome Dick Grayson still. The Riz Ahmed thing really excites me because he's not just on Collider's list. I was Googling around last night, and he's on everybody's list. And I think he deserved a little more credit than he got for Rogue One. And, you know, he's doing a lot of great work now, not just that. But he needs his time to shine. And then I jotted down a couple other names. Uh, I know I'm going to get crap for it simply no. because they don't look like him. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm a big fan of Glenn Powell right now. I think he's got great range. He's in hidden figures for like an itty bitty amount of screen time, yet makes a huge impression. Mm-hmm. Same thing with uh, Everybody Wants Him. He's not the focal point of that movie. He's so good in it. He's a great actor. He's, yeah. he's, he, I, I first saw him in Scream Queens. He's, he's so incredible. much fun in Scream Queens. He's amazing. I think Taron Egerton is mm-hmm. great. It's only a matter of time before he gets a big role like beyond Kingsman and does something of, of superhero film status. I really like Keith Stanfield from from Get Out from Short Term Twelve. It's there's really it's only a matter of time before his name becomes a ho- household name. And then Dylan O'Brien. I don't know what what his situation is right now because of his Maze Runner in, injury, but he is a really exceptional action star. If even if you're not a fan of Maze Runner as a whole, his performance in that first movie is pretty damn good. The first movie, Maze Runner. I, I, I love so it. Bad. You guys no. didn't like the Scorchio <laughs> trials? Scorchio. That's for well, you comedy. Then, then it got late. Things, got, <laughs> things got confusing and muddled. Oh, yeah. He was also rumored for Spider Man for a while, Dylan yeah. O'Brien. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he would make a good Spider Man. I think he would be a good Nightwing as well. I love the Powell recommendation. He's such yeah. a great actor and he's got such diversity. Then make Army Hammer Hell Jordan. What's up, son? That'll be in Justice League. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Now we're going to move on to your live Twitter questions. You can tweet us at Collider Video. Wendy, what do we got picked out? All right, this first one comes from Kay Grabber, who writes, How did you get your start in the entertainment industry? I'm struggling to make my own film as an amateur. Schnepp, uh, how did you get your start? Let's see. Uh, I was doing lots of drugs in Chicago, <laughs> messing around, doing performance art and weird, like film, shooting film and video. And then some friends of mine were, like, making music videos for Nine Inch Nails and Ministry, and I just became, like, a PA, started acting in their music videos. I was surrounded by equipment, uh, you know, com- early Macintosh computers. They got an Avid there. I started learning how to edit and do graphics and started making my own uh, music videos, started directing my own stuff, started getting hired by people. They were like, yo, there's this weirdo in Chicago. They started flying me out to uh, work at uh, Cartoon Network, started editing Space Ghost, and then it just went from there. I started directing TV shows, uh, directed Upright Citizens Brigade, got into the DGA, then started directing Metalocalypse for eight years, directed Venture Brothers, Black Panther, ABCs of Death, 
you know, that's you just got to, it's, it's all perseverance and don't give up. Perry? Uh, one of my first jobs out of undergrad was working for Real Talk. It was a movie review show with Jeffrey Lyons and Allison Bales, and it was a great show. When it got canceled, I started doing my own writing and reviewing, and eventually I felt guilty talking about other people's movies without experiencing it myself, so I went to grad school, and I'm pretty sure... In my case, I never would have made a single movie in my life had I not done that program. Mm. Jeremy? Well, uh, my friends and I, we, we got together. We wanted to make short films. We got a camera. And when that sucked balls and I didn't do that anymore, that camera was just sitting there. And after I had hit the end of the internet and I'd already watched all of the porn, I was like, <laughs> i got nothing else to do. Why don't I just talk about that Transformers 2 movie? That sucked. And so now here I am. Is, is this the story you tell girls on dates? Like, I had reached the end of the internet, yeah. First watched date. all the porn. First date, and, and I'm like, look. Now we are here. Now I, I, I he just doesn't leave, he leaves out like, that one, all the porn. Like, he just says, I reached the end of the internet, because that's very poetic. By, impl by implication, yes. I saw this commercial that was like, this dude's on, on the computer, and it says, you've reached the end of the internet. And my friend and I were like, that's a twisted person. Yeah. There is some dark stuff oh. on the internet. I can tell you that. That guy's saying it all. That is not dad of the year. Ooh. That uh, sounds like it could be the title of a horror movie, whether it's the Jeremy John story or not. Oh, the Jeremy John story is the <laughs> horrorist of horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I went to film school and then I came out here. Then, you know, the, like a lot of people, you come out here, it's like, it's not, you don't get handed a job. You can't, yeah. whatever. You've got to actually figure out how to develop some skills. So I worked in editing and shooting, and then I worked on some television shows, internet stuff, indie projects, and Somehow I ended up here. Not not exactly sure, but somehow I ended up <laughs> right here, right now, you know talking key, to you guys. You know the key in all of it is that everyone sees it like it being the internet. You set up a camera and felt they have to see it as a get rich, get rich quick scheme. Like no. every town mm -hmm. has people who are like, I'm going to go to Los Angeles and sell my scripts, and they find out they're like, Hey, you have a script? That's great. So do all those people. Yeah, and exactly. So mm -hmm. It's it's a mixture of yeah, perseverance, uh, talent, and timing, mm -hmm. and and it's just when it all lines up. Up like the planets, then you get a shoe in somehow. I don't know how. I don't even know how I'm here. I uh, I think I I put something in John Campia's coffee one day, and then then I was like, hey, I'm on Movie Talk. You didn't know, and so now here I am. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, totally. It's it's not easy. Yeah. Ashley, what about you? Um, when I was in college, I was um, a theater major, so I did some short films through school and I all that stuff. I didn't know you were a theater major. Oh, yeah. Nova, that's Hello. awesome. <laughs> theater major. And then um, I was auditioning. I got an agency. I did some print work. And then once I got out of college, audition, audition, audition. And then I got movie talk, and here I am. Wendy? Kind of the same route, but I didn't. Uh, I wasn't allowed to major in uh, film oh, or yeah. acting in, in college. because yeah, I had uh, to persuade my parents, too. Mm -hmm. and so <laughs> I was like, all right. But I did come out to L.A. to pursue acting. Little did I know it was um, a lot more difficult than I anticipated. I mean, I, I knew it wasn't going to be like a walk in the park, but it's like within the first four months, I ran out of money. Mm. I ran out of money. I had $27 in my bank account, and I cried every night, and I didn't know what to do. And I just kept going, and I worked in a lot of restaurants <laughs> and made a lot of tips. <laughs> and I saved it all up, and somehow I'm sitting here after going through three interviews with John Campia. The second one with Dennis was the most intimidating. Oh, he's my like, God. Th that interview <laughs> here? And I'm like, I don't know. Dennis can be very stone-faced. <laughs> he's, like, he's like Spock. There's no emotion. He's like, so did I do well? I'll let you know later. Totally. You're like, oh, he he's not know that about Dennis. He, he could actually, that would be the scariest interview ever. Because, like, so you'd be a great poker player, too. Because, oh, like, right. I mean, reading you is tough. I know. It really is. I would do that. Like I just suck years. at poker. That's why I'm good at craps. I'm just randomly throwing yeah. dice. Like, give me that money. We're lo losing the money. I, you yeah. know, I just want to add what Wendy said is really, there's a truth to all. We've all experienced that, whether you're young or old, and I'm very old. And I've experienced only having $27, negative $27, yeah. many, many times in my different careers. And believe me, it's all about not giving up and not, not folding in and throwing in the towel, whatever kind of thing you want to say. It's about believing in yourself and moving forward. So that's, I mean, there's times you're gonna be broke and owe thousands of dollars. Just don't give up on yourself. Yeah. Well said, Schnepp. All right, what's next? This one comes from Sarah H who writes, how do you differentiate between paying homage to past films and simply ripping them off? 
hmm. or ripping off of them. Sorry. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that, that that's actually a really tough one. Um, I I feel like when there's just understanding, um, satire is easy. You know, like if you're if it's clearly satire, then that's easy. If you're doing a drama, it becomes a little more difficult. If it's a serious moment, they're like, I want this to land, and it is in the vein of something else. It's a little easier to be like, wait, did you just steal that? Hmm. Um, but like if if you look at uh, Christopher Nolan's uh, Interstellar, Interstellar is not like 2001: A Space Odyssey, but there definitely is paying homage in there. Um, so I suppose if it's not direct plot rip, but there are moments where you're like, oh, that's paying homage, and it's fine, but just don't don't play trust the well, entire thing. We just talked about a, a trailer today, Kong Skull Island, mm -hmm. which is in certain ways paying homage right. to not just using a Doors soundtrack straight up from Apocalypse Now, just a different song, mm -hmm. but also the helicopters, the shots at sunset, a lot of things that you just immediately associate with Apocalypse Now, and it's set in the same time period, it's close enough, um, but it's not a ripoff, and it's not doing things that Apocalypse Now did, but it's got that instant recall flavor to it. So I would say that's a, a, a good way to have an homage, a tribute without ripping it no, off. Khan kicked ass in Apocalypse Now, dude. Are you kidding he, me? I know. He was, he was, he was the best. That's why we won. Beast. It's also yeah. just the nature of our industry. Everything is influenced by right. something else, right. and that's why we are where we are today, because the movies that came before came before, and this is the path they put us on. But I'm, I'm just thinking recently, because Belko Experiment is on the way, and it frustrates me a little how everyone calls every Thing, a battle royale ripoff because right. that that's probably a good example of towing the line between ripping something off i mean it's they still take that idea and make it their own thing in different settings i get i get very frustrated because i'm very I, I love hunger games so much yeah. and i love those books and it always bugged me when everyone's like oh that is battle royale but for for the ya fandom at this point which is not true at all, because The Hunger Games is is the central plot point of that movie, but there's so much more around it, and the games right. itself, it's not really exactly the same mm -hmm. as Battle Royale. And there's Royale. also, based on books before, even before Battle Royale, there's Session 9, which was based on all these kinds of, like, you know, hunting down people, the most dangerous game. It's all, you know, everything's based on something previously already thought of. Yeah, yeah well, this is a very tough question to answer, just because there is that line. It's like, is this an homage? Is this you're inspired by, or are you just to make it, then it's it's so much just not actually ripping it off. But if it's straight up like, yeah, it's that, you're like, ah, well, that's, well, you might have taken a it's bit It's like a much. poor man Star Wars. <laughs> I'd still watch it, but I would know exactly oh, what too. it is. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Alright, All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. I want to thank people who joined us at the table today. Jeremy, where can people find you? You can find me on uh, at uh, Jeremy Johns on Twitter and YouTube and the rest of the internet. My show, Awesome Tacular, is on the Verizon Go 90 network. We do some fun, nerdy stuff. That is some good nerd stuff. You come check it out. You'll have some fun. You can catch me watching the poor man Star Wars tomorrow because that will be awesome. Right. Perry. I'm sure you were about to say you can catch me watching porn. That's exactly you, you what did. I thought. Yeah. I, I thought he was going to oh say you God. could catch oh me at the God. end this of the is, internet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is highly irregular. I don't know where they get this from. Uh. Uh, you grossly underestimated me. I already watched that months ago. <laughs> well, in a perfect transition, you can find me at P. Nemiroff on Twitter and Instagram and Collider behind the scenes. Every Saturday, we're working on something brand new and super funny for you that will hopefully pan out. It will. It'll be funny. It'll be a mess. Snap. You can find me live later today on Collider Heroes at 2.30 p.m. Uh, wherever you are on the planet, it'll be somewhere around that time or six hours before or after. Find me on Instagram and uh, Twitter at John Schnepp. Ashley? Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, at Ashley Mova. Happy Tuesday, guys. Wendy? On YouTube at the Movie Couple channel and on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero or Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Don't forget to... So forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider Videos, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.